Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In a recent live stream, I decided to explore the use of nuclear stages as reusable stages that would boost payloads to the moon. And I was using the Fuji stage that I had previously designed for my Kasei launcher. But I wanted to do this very realistically, and so instead of using the Kasei launcher, I am going to put it on SLS instead. So we would need to underfuel it a little bit because SLS does not have the Kasei launcher's capacity. And I also decided to use the Nerva 1, not the NRX or any of those. Nerva 1 as the most realistic nuclear engine. I mean, uh, basically I was being very conservative about the stats here. And I wanted to see what kind of payload capacity the Fuji would have with the Nerva. And so we're reserving fuel for the, the stages return to low Earth orbit after it boosts something to the moon. And I discovered that with the full Fuji, it might be able to boost 80 tons to the moon, but SLS would not be able to launch that kind of Fuji. So I underfueled the Fuji and I locked the reserve fuel in a separate tank and discovered that maybe 50 tons was doable. So the Fuji stage would be able to boost 50 tons to the moon and then come back to low Earth orbit and be reused again. Uh, it would need to be refueled and then uh, we would boost another payload. Now, to demonstrate that the Fuji was not too light, I mocked up a similar procedural tank using aluminum lithium gridded tanks, and those were three tons lighter than the Fuji stage, which more than accounts for the radiators and the little Hydrolox engines that I have to aid the Nerva stage since I didn't want the Nerva to always do the burns. And we also have hydrogen gas tanks for the RCS thrusters, so it captures the boil off and uses that for the RCS and that gets 260 seconds of ISP. So it's just a SLS Block 1B, standard SLS space launch system with the five segment boosters and the normal EUS. Uh, no funny business. So the Fuji stage right now is actually a little bit past the capacity of SLS. I had to do a lot of launches during the live stream trying to get the payload to orbit and I had to cut it back know, reduce how much of the Hydrolox fuel I have for those engines, uh, the oxygen mainly for those engines. And I'm sure with a little bit more practice and maybe KOS controlling it, we would be, be able to do it properly, uh, but it was a uh, pain, basically. And in this case, I think I tossed it up too high. You can see we're at 523 kilometers. And here we are using the little engines on the Fuji stage which are currently underfueled, it can actually have much more delta V with these engines, but it's not as, they're not as efficient as the RL-10s on the EUS, so ultimately I had to use the Nerva. We weren't supposed to use the Nerva to get it to orbit, and I'm confident that we would not need to, but we did there, <laughs> so for about 100 meters per second or so. So, yeah. So that is not supposed to happen because people criticized me previously for using nuclear engines to get to orbit, though I'll probably do it again sometime soon. Anyway, our payload that we are going to boost to the moon in this case is nowhere near the 50 tons that it could possibly be, but instead is this little Skybus, uh, which is the Skylon uh, crew pod that I introduced in recent videos, which could escape from Skylon, but is actually launcher agnostic, and in this case I decided to put it on Vulcan. Of course we would have to have a little uh, gap in Vulcan's payload fairing so that crew could get in, but that happens with many launchers like Soyuz and all, so nothing new there. Uh, but I am underfueling Vulcan's upper stage, the Centaur stage, but I end up underfueling it too much. So I actually write in the new numbers, the lesser numbers to make sure that the launch clamps don't refill it, so I don't have to lock the upper stage to prevent them from refilling it. And, well, we have to target our Nerva stage, our Fuji stage, and off it goes with six boosters. Now, Vulcan should obviously be able to do this, but we're at the... We're not really at the lower orbit capacity for Vulcan. Really, it's a matter of practicing these trajectories with these rockets with really long duration upper stages. However, this morning, uh, Tori Bruno from U Lake uh, said that they were developing a shorter Centaur for lower forward payloads. And so in that case, instead of underfueling this Centaur, it'd be a much more efficient Centaur uh, to do this job. And maybe then we wouldn't have fallen short. <laughs> we fell short again with this, just like we did with the SLS. And so the poor little Skybus uh, 
the so named because it was Skylon and I wanted to be it to be called a crew bus. So it's a Skylon crew bus or Sky bus, and uh, it would have to complete orbit using its abort engines, which is what I did here. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't have the control location right, and so that's a little bit complicated. So I actually burned in the wrong direction there. We have to go the other way around. Uh, yeah. I really need a docking port on top or to make sure that the entire pod is oriented so that the top of it is actually where we control from. But anyway, we did the rendezvous, but that cut out a lot of Delta V from our little crew bus, so that's gonna be a factor in what happens. But now it's attached to the Fuji stage and the Fuji can boost it over to the moon. And so the Fuji does. The, the crew bus is nowhere near the capacity that we checked in the VAB, but I'll have to find some other payload to actually make use of the full Fuji-ness of the Fuji. And because of long nuclear stage and the fact that the burn timer wasn't telling me the truth, uh, we were a little bit off in the timing. That's also another inefficiency that we're going to have to deal with. Now, in order to mitigate how much radiation the crew gets from the nuclear stage, maybe this burn would be done by the crew bus, the sky bus instead. But here we're doing it with the Fuji stage, with the Nerva. And so there we go. But yeah, I, the sky bus should be able to handle a 30 meter per second correction like that. And then the sky bus on its own captures around the moon. And so that's what we're doing here. But the Fuji is still flying by. Now in nominal operations, what would happen is that one sky bus would arrive around the moon and capture her into order around the moon, while another sky bus would be leaving and it would attach itself to the Fuji stage. We we're going to do it with the same sky bus in this case because I didn't have a previous sky bus around the moon. So first of all, it's going to get into low orbit, but we don't have the full capacity anymore because we used some for the launch and the rendezvous. Probably the Fuji should have rendezvoused with this instead of the other way around. But here we are now boosting back up again. So we got into a low orbit. Actually, we were crashing into the surface for a bit there. And now we're trying to catch up to the Fuji again. Now it might not be good for it to rendezvous with the Fuji here. If we wanted to mitigate radiation exposure, the sky bus would instead boost itself so that it was getting to a low periapsis around the Earth and then it would rendezvous with the Fuji at Earth. But that's a really tough rendezvous because it has to be very fast. And here I burned in the wrong direction again. Uh, I burned in the wrong direction and then we had to correct that. So the Fuji had to do the rest of the rendezvous. So that is what it's doing. It uses the remaining oxygen in this case. Uh, we could use the little OMS engines. I actually bonked the sky bus here accidentally. Whoops. Boink. Uh, but the oxygen has to be used for the fuel cell as well. They might have made this Nerva bimodal. In other words, it's producing electricity. I'm not sure. It seemed to. But in principle, the Fuji uses a fuel cell. Okay, and here we are docking on the docking port. If it'll allow us. Oh, there we go. All right, so now we have a bit of a problem in that we didn't do this really NASA-like and I didn't have a proper free return trajectory, which we should have done. Uh, so our apoapsis is too high and we're doing correction here in moon space. I tried plotting something uh, at apoapsis or elsewhere and this seemed like the most efficient option even though it's very radial. Uh, so yeah, we're doing this extra nearly 1,200 meter per second burn that normally should not be necessary and that's going to be cutting into what we have left in order to get into a low earth orbit. In the end, low earth orbit would take 3000 meters per second and we have only 2664. It's still a okay orbit for refueling, but it's not great. And of course, if we hadn't done so many mistakes along the way, uh, starting with the launch of SLS, uh, with the Fuji stage on it, you know, it should be able to get the stage into orbit without requiring the stage to use its own fuel. Starting with that and all the other stuff, if we could refine it all a little bit, I'm sure we could get into a proper lower earth orbit with this fairly minimal payload. So, yeah. But the if we are launching 50 tons to the moon, the Fuji can't carry any payload back in that case. Uh, I think probably we should say not 50, but maybe 40 to 45 tons just to be safe. But yeah, in that case, it would not be bringing any payload back. It would only have enough Delta V to get itself back. 
So with this demonstration of what I think is the best possible use of nuclear stages, which is to boost things either to transmitter injection or at least the first 3,200 meters per second on an interplanetary trajectory and then bring them back so they can be reused. With this demonstration, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.